Welcome to this session, Sanitation Financing, Creating Market Segments for More Efficiency. To meet the SG6 target for safely managed sanitation, a capital investment of US $46 billion per year is needed, as well as US $21 billion annually for operational expenses. Not only are these amounts staggering, but it's also extremely unclear who will foot these bills. What is clear is that the public sector alone will never be able to bring up such amounts. The private sector needs to step in and we need to be very innovative finding new financial instruments and partnerships to solve these huge challenges. What is also urgently needed is better support for sanitation businesses and getting private investors interested in the sector. And these are some of the subjects we will be discussing today. And with me today, I have two experts in this field, Valentin Post, who is CEO of Finnish Mondial and who has worked in the sanitation sector for over 25 years. Finnish Mondial is a consortium of three organizations, Waste, Aqua for All and AMREF, dedicated to solving the sanitation challenge by working holistically at the household business, financial institution and governmental level. Also with me, I have Jack Jacqueline Barance, who is chair of the Take a Stake Foundation and who will speak about the new impact investment fund she helped to set up, the Take a Stake Fund, and whose aim it is to support sanitation businesses to reach maturity by innovatively blending public and private finance. And we will talk today about the different types of sanitation businesses that are out there, what they need in terms of support and how to innovatively bring them to the next level. So I'll start with you, Valentin. Uh, I understand that Waste has been working on financing for many years and it has been your signature approach. What triggered the NGO Waste to start working on financing? Thanks. Uh, basically, we were looking at two things. Uh, we were looking at sustainability and we were looking at scaling. And uh, the time when we started, about 2003, with this approach, a lot of subsidies were flowing into the sector, into the sanitation sector particularly. Building toilets was subsidized. And if that route is followed, the more successful you are, the more money you need. So the more subsidies have to go. Uh, so that's one element where we think that sort of money is not available. Number two, sustainability. So getting, uh, getting things for free is not really uh, we think a route to sustainability. So that's what we tried out in 2003 and I've been working on this ever since. Why is it not good to get something for free? Well, if you are, let's say, the recipient is always nice. But what you find if you have a social cause, uh, you find that things for free are quite often not valued. And uh, particularly talking about toilets, they're not being used. A number of cases from India where a toilet which was given for free has been used uh, to keep a goat, uh, to, to use uh, as a library, to even build, confer, uh, to uh, convert it into a video store. Strangest things. So the whole purpose of uh, people being and willing to pay really makes also the usage parts much more interesting. And uh, we've been working on this, uh, whether people are indeed willing to pay, and we found out, yes, they are willing to pay, and they are also paying. So it's not only willingness, it's actually happening. And that has been a sort of a, a game changer for us. Do you want to add something on this? Yeah, Brooklyn? no, absolutely. Because it's interesting, actually nothing is for free, because the money has to come from somewhere. So it was donors, eh, subsidies. But subsidies do not scale. You can, it's impossible to reach SDG 6 on sanitation with subsidy money. So you need to tap into other money. And another reason, and actually you're mentioning it already, but it's if, you, if people pay for themselves, it also makes them feel proud. Yeah, so it's more on an equal level. It's not helping, it's, it's really also seeing it as an equal partner. And we'll come back to that, but it also allows business. So there's a lot of reasons why actually phasing out and as much as possible start having people pay for their own toilets is re uh, really useful. 
Thank you. Uh, and Valentin, when you when you talk about rethink funding, what what do you mean with this? So when you have a different kind of funding, uh, people themselves, poor as they may be, they always have some sort of income somewhere. So it can be small odd jobs. Uh, the, the kind of outlay you need for a sanitation system, uh, let's say about 250 euros or 300 dollars, is not something they easily have. So working with institutions, organizations who do micro credits was for us the game changer. So when we work with them, they are creating demand, they're working with the people themselves and they're responding to their needs. And then having the smaller repayments over a year or even two years, we found out that really, uh, that really changes the market. And you very early also started working with business financing. Uh, could you tell us the link with the MFI and, and business financing? Yeah, this is something normally you don't say. No, you, you say, we've done everything right. Now we did something horribly wrong. When we started uh, with the, the microfinance, we didn't pay any attention to the business side. So people have been building sanitation systems and we assumed that they were doing the right thing. But what we found out is that actually people were taking loans, households were taking loans, and the systems that were being built were not very good. So then we realized the whole sanitation sector, the, the people building it, their formal education in doing this is non-existent. There are very little sanitation construction and design training courses or programs. Uh, so we started doing it ourselves because we felt that we also owe it if someone takes a loan for a uh, sanitation system or for a toilet, it should also be a bot uh, typical bottom of the pyramid product uh, design. So it should be high quality, low price. By working with uh, Mason, we figured out that we can actually reduce the price of the toilet. We could increase the usability. And at the same time, we then realized that these Masons have different financing needs as compared to the, uh, the households. Mm -hmm. So that's really what got us triggering in, moving into this sector. And we could see the Masons, um, some of them growing, not all of them, of course. The ones who are not doing very successful being hired by others. So slowly these businesses were growing and then the financial needs became more than microfinance can offer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do you want to add something, Jacqueline? I want to add a lot, but well, <laughs> maybe we do that later. No, no, we'll do it later. We get to the business yeah, side. Yeah. But it's <laughs> you, you have a lot to say on this subject. We'll, co we'll come to that. Uh, why would you need uh, larger companies? What, what is wrong with small businesses? Yeah, I was just going to respond to Jacqueline first. I hope she's not going to contradict, right? <laughs> she can add, but not con. So, um, yeah, we, we think uh, you, you need larger companies, you need more uh, to sort of professionalize the sector. Uh, that's one element. If you talk about innovation, innovation doesn't happen in the hand-to-mouth businesses. It happens in smaller, innovative, small growing business. They innovate. And this is something we need, because sanitation is a sector, let's, let's face it, people don't want to talk about, the, uh, the innovations are not really there. And whilst we all use, every day we go to the toilet, and we have time there to think about things, but we don't. So that uh, we need businesses to help us there, and we need this sort of innovative, disruptive thinking. And this is in process. So uh, m talking here about toilets, about sanitation, is a first step in this journey. Great. Uh, and could we also say something about microfinance? Uh, as you yeah. mentioned earlier, it works and F MFIs are stepping in providing sanitation loans. Could you give me some figures on this? Sure. Now, it was not that when we started that MFIs were jumping, right? They were, they were not really jumping in, so this is very nice. Uh, they had to be convinced. Uh, they had to be convinced because this was something new for them. And they were thinking, okay, people take, take a toilet loan. Where are they going to get the money to repay the, the toilet? And that notion is a very powerful one. Uh, there was also no experience from the microfinance institutions, so we had to work with them, build the capacity of their staff, and, and also started um, yeah, sort of ingraining that actually people save money 
if they have a toilet to the house. They save time, time is money. They save health bills. So all that started working into that uh, ecosystem. And uh, to give you a little bit of numbers today, um, I think I've, uh, we've been talking now for six minutes or so, we built four toilets. Uh, four toilets you can value at 1,000 euros. So uh, yes, it is working, uh, it is growing, and we're not there yet. It's very impressive to hear this. Uh, but you also mentioned that in the beginning you had to overcome some hurdles. Yeah. Could you tell us about these challenges? Yeah, this was really the, the microfinance institution not very uh, interested in it. Uh, they, uh, they told us there's no demand. So uh, people come to them for a cattle loan. They come for this loan, they come for that loan. This is easy. No? There's, there's some money to be made there. The, incidentally, someone would come for a toilet, and that, okay, that's a very strange request. But they were getting more evidence that people wanted this. But then to uh, be able to actually market the toilet, and that's the crucial part in the whole ecosystem, the toilet is marketed by the MFI staff, their field staff. You have to understand it. So the understanding the toilets, understanding how to explain what a toilet is, what it does, what are the advantages, and giving people a choice. That was all something that had to be learned to change the management information system, to get the data into their regular systems. All that had to be done. And today, uh, there are a number of MFIs, our partner MFIs, who do sanitation lending as part of their regular business. Hmm. And Jacqueline, what do you say on this? I, I just want to add to a, a couple of few things. First of all, and, and then we come to the business side also, why is large super important? Eh? We, because large, it's about scaling. We need scaling. And the companies who are doing well, they are the ones who understand how to sell products, how to reach their customers. These are the ones you want to help grow because that's how you can uh, get to uh, finally meet your SDG six. And the other thing on the MFI part, it's, it's, I find that really interesting. And, and we see that as the same also in the business side, if there is no track record, it's new, no bank, no financial institution, no investor touches it. Because the first thing they're afraid of, I put my money in there, I'll never get it back. So we need to build track record, we need to show how to deal with the risks. You, it was done very successfully with microfinance. We see similar issues also on the business side. So in that sense, and, and yes, we do agree on approach quite a bit because we have to learn how to do it. Failing and figuring out is part of trying to understand and figure out how to do it. With microfinance, yeah, 10 years later, it's common mainstream business almost. Or actually it is. I can leave the word almost probably, right? No, oh. I, I would, <laughs> not everywhere. So Good. for some it's mainstream <laughs> business. Uh, qualified a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. So, Valentin, uh, so the, the solution is easy, the poor will repay. Is that how you see it? Is it yeah. too much sunshine? It, there is sunshine. The, the whole concept that uh, poor um, are poor repayers, that, that can go in the dustbin. Uh, what has been the experience uh, globally, not only microfinance, but in the financial world as a whole, on the whole, it's the large borrowers who default. And when they default, then really the, well, we're in sanitation, right? The shit hits the fan. Uh, the smaller borrowers, they typically take smaller amounts, but their repayment rates are very high. And what we found on sanitation, they're even higher, or on par with regular income generating loans. So we are uh, indeed seeing a trend that the repayment rates of 98, 99%, we have MFIs in India reporting 100% over the years, so it's not incidental case, but over the years 100% repayment. And any financial sector or any financial institute would jump for joy if they get 100% repayment. Mm -hmm. So about this financing of the demand side, the households, uh, would you say that is solved? To a large extent it is. Um, but it's, it's also work in progress in the sense that uh, not every country is at the same level. Um, and some countries, they are still thinking about, uh, um, let's say, 
slow, yeah, different kind of sanitation systems. So we talk here about safely managed sanitation, which is actually SDG 6.2. This means that also the fecal sludge should be taken into account. And that sort of thing is slowly moving in many countries. So it is solved in some countries. It is work in progress in others. Great, thank you. So let's get over to TAS uh, and also to, to the different uh, segments uh, and that of business financing beyond microfinance. How does this market look? Is, is there a market? It's interesting. <clears throat> when, people, when people are able to pay, there is a market because they spend their money on something. And once that start happen, you see that there is a lot of business out there and they're all informal. Now, if you talk about the market, so there is a market for these businesses. Is there a market for finance? Now, we, that's a different story. In microfinance, yes, there is, because a lot of banks, yeah, microfinance banks step in into that. But it's, there, is, it's, there is also a market for business finance. The only problem is it starts at companies that want one million. Yeah, one million, and impact investors are interested. So why one million? Because there is a lot of work. You have to go find the companies, you have to assess them, you have to monitor them. It's a lot of costs. And they may be looking at 30 companies and they may even invest in seven. So you have to recover all these costs. You can do that above one million. That's, that's, there's a market. Now we have a bit of a problem. We have the microfinance, which kind of ends at 1,500 euro. And they will finance micro businesses up to 1,500. And then we have 1 million. So, hmm. but we found there are lots of businesses out there which operate in this market. They are the toilet builders because there are people willing to pay. They need proper training. Yes, that's super important. And, and let me give you one example. It's also pit emptiers. And they literally do their job in the dark at night. Yeah, they empty the pits, people pay them. But they, they can grow, they, they make a lot of money. So if we could help these type of companies getting a pump, getting decent stuff, they have a lot of people working for them, put them in the light. Yeah, so literally in this segment between 1500 and 1 million, and that's what we call, call the missing middle. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about this? Uh, yeah. And there's people who make it really super complicated because they say the missing middle of the missing mill. Okay, no, now we're getting complicated. But let's say above 400,000 of a need by a company. If somebody needs 400,000 to grow, it tells a lot. It says actually they're in business. They know how to... Uh, they have yeah, they find their customers, they have a good turnover, they have cash flow, but their administration is probably still a bit of a mess. Their, their staffing is not very well organized, so they need help. But that's really a group of businesses above 400,000 up to 1 million, which you can really help to further grow. That's really super promising. To be honest, that's with Take a Stake, the group we are really targeting. And then there is this group, 1,500 up to 300,000, 400,000. Ooh, that's really tricky. We need to do that too, because there, we need to develop that market. That's what we want. Yeah, they are out there, but we need to help them. So we try to find ways also to deal with this group. Great. And why, why would you say that business finance is such a problem? Yeah, well, it's exactly, I mean, the first thing that investors want, even impact investors, they, they call themselves impact investors, but with you investors with impact. I think maybe that's, that's more wise because investment means you want your money back. And under 1 million, it gets really tricky if you get your money back. Like we said before, there is no track record. We still have to build that. So it's hard to show at the moment, these investors, there is this opportunity out there, and the risks. Many investors are afraid of the risks, especially legislate, le uh, legislation. Uh, we operate in the water and sanitation sector. There's always governments involved. So I un we understand, but that's exactly what we want to deal with and show investors, come in, take a stake. Yeah, that's why it's called like that. Great, thank you. And uh, before we run out of time here, 
uh, I, I will end with this. For the future, uh, I will let you both answer this. What do you need for the future? We'll start with you, Valentin. So we are creating markets and uh, markets will sustain themselves, but to create a market, you need funding. And uh, funding is needed to build capacities, to uh, find out how we can close that, and I'm going to paraphrase uh, Jacqueline, that lower missing middle, so that's the missing middle from 1500 to 400,000, we don't know it yet, but we are working on this, for that we also need money. And we don't want to disturb markets. So we have to have different instruments, and I can tell you straight away, some of them will fail hopelessly. And for that, again, money is needed. So you need to be able, and that's what you can do with public money, you are also allowed to fail. And be proud of it and tell people, no, I'm not be too proud of it, but uh, be proud of your failure. And not of failing, you should be proud, but that, that things go wrong and be open about it. But this is a difficult market. It's a difficult market in Europe. It's a difficult market in developing countries where we operate. So funding definitely is, uh, is the core. Um, the second thing I think we would uh, need is more like-minded people. And that's why I think gatherings like this are very important. Because this is something which is much beyond Finnish Mondial. It's much beyond take a stake. We need much more like-minded people willing to think like this. Yes, we need another kind of financing. We need to work together on this. Thank you, Valentin. And Jacqueline, what, what is your take on the future? What do you need? Yeah, I would call it proud of, of trying. Yeah? And um, our take on the future is, uh, maybe before I say that, one thing on blending. Yeah? It's not like blending. You throw money off public side and private side in a blender and you make a nice meatball out of it or an ice cream. You know, it's not like that. Every funder comes with their own conditions. So, and that's, that's the game we have to play. So from a business perspective, and also what we do in Take a Stake, we need investors. We need investors to take a stake. And investors will get their money back. That's, and they get a good return, a decent return and a lot of impact. But we also know that uh, we need to do something to get to to take away some of the risks and that's where we need the public uh, funders come in ideally we don't need that subsidy that's actually our goal get rid of the subsidies because the less sub you can scale but we still need it to work on this we need it for uh, technical assistance to the companies we need it for maybe first loss you know just to to take a uh, some of that risk and, and also, we needed uh, to be able to try certain instruments, see what works and see what doesn't work. And maybe one last point is our loans or everything which we want to do, it, we do in Take a Stake is on market conditions. Because only then, when a company is used to paying and having market conditions, they can go to the mainstream. Yeah? The best thing is after they have benefited from the support, our loans, they can go to regular investors, regular banks. If you subsidize uh, the interest rates, they get lazy. Yeah? They're, they're pampered. It's not a golden rule. Yeah? There's always, but for us, we want to mainstream. That's our goal. So investors, donors, hey, work. We have work to do and we need money. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Valentin and Jacqueline, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you.